There's one called the Lagahu. The other Caribbean countries, French-speaking ones in particular, they call it Lugaru. That is said to be a man who read bad books, black books. Le Garou is uh, in folklore, in Trinidad folklore, it's a man who deals with the devil and he is well known for pulling a chain. They are very skillful at escaping, you might say they are shapeshifters if you want, like can change their appearance. Lagahu is a man, he can appear as a horse, who appears as a donkey, who appears as a dog, with a chain dragging. What I noticed about um, the people they call Lagu, a few people, uh, is that they have clear eyes. There's one that I quote unquote knew. <laughs> In the village where I was born and where I spent a few years, there was a tall guy, nearly seven feet tall, and kind of slender, so he walked the loop and walk of Lagu. And one day they found him well beaten up by the road because they wanted to mark the Lagu. You cannot say he wasn't a Lagu afterwards because he'd get a scar somewhere. Well, it's a very cruel thing because it involves scapegoating and it involves at times the, at least the concept of, of beating somebody to death. The Lagahu, or Loop Garu, the wolf man, again is a combination of the European concept of the werewolf creature that interfaces with the African shaman. And out of this comes the stories of the shape changer. I have heard people say, I've spoken to people who said they saw it already. In the country I'm talking about, eh, where they had no street light. He was coming home late in the night and rain was falling. So he went to shelter by the shop. And while he was sheltering, a, a dog came next to him. And the dog, he just saw the dog began to grow. And he, as it was going, he started to move back. And the dog was growing, growing, growing. And he started to run, and then the dog came back small. There was a secret society that surrounded the idea of the shape changer into the pig. And it is my conviction that this is the beginning of the Lagahu stories, the shape changer stories. This was described in a French way and they called it the wolf man, the, the, you know, the loup garou. This tradition was brought to Trinidad among the Africans who came here with the French people out of Haiti. This shape changer tradition, that, that the, the stories that you hear when you collect folklore stories about how um, this man changed into a pig or this big pig suddenly appears in a village and everybody suspects what it is and they go after it and they kill it and all this kind of stuff. In Lengua village, one night, they hear chains, the chains of slavery, dragging through the street. When they look outside, they see a black man, naked as he born, Grease down. He have a coffin on his head with three candles. And he walking through the village, dragging the chains that wrap around his waist. When they look up so in the sky, they see a tall, grey, wavering figure with his feet straddling the crossroad. As he passed the police station, the door slammed, bam! And he walked through the whole village. What do you think he have in the coffin? Bush rum. Because you have to understand that the Obia man have to make a living. The Obia man is always a businessman. Eh? You see the tall creature that was straddling the crossroads? That evening at about half past seven, eight o'clock, the Obia man went. He get a lot of green bush, leaves, piece of mango tree, things that would smoke plenty, and he light a fire. It's night, nobody has seen, everybody door closed and so, but a lot of smoke rising. He's the only man in the village who has something called a magic lantern. And what he did was that he projected onto that column of smoke the shape of a figure with his legs open wide and his arms outstretched. So for the people who dared to look outside, what they saw was a slide, a 
projected on a column of grey smoke that looked for all the world like a phantom. There are books in occult and there are practitioners of occult. There are people who are not pundits or not sadhus and so on, but they do practice obia and witchcraft. I'm sure African obia men here are using some of the traits and skills of the Indian obia men and vice versa. It's a thriving industry and they can tell you that there are very important people in society who go to them and seek their services. People who read the Titalbe does a lot of practice too. The Titalbe is a, is a, a Hindu book, an Indian book. And the pundits and them and there are certain people who could read the Titalbe could make you get in a lot of problem. Because even my father told my father that there are certain time in the um, night if you could read the Titalbe, you go to a river. 12 o'clock in the night, it must be 12 o'clock. You see the short fig like that? You must go and cut and they're now busting out. Cut out that part. And you go in the um, in the middle of the river. You have to go naked and stand up into the water. And you're asking that fig stock, the head that will break out the uh, make the bunch of fig, what you want and what you come for. And that will turn to a man head and you'll talk to it. In the middle of the 19th century, towards the end of the 19th century, from the 1850s to the 1880s and so. In Europe, the Western magical tradition became very strong. There was a revival of medieval magic as a fashion. This is pentagrams and invocations and selling your soul to the devil and that sort of thing. The Obiaman of that day began to get these books. So he began to understand the nature of the relationship between man and the devil in a Christian context. So here you've got this syncretic again, the joining together of the traditional West African shaman and the European-oriented Faust looking to make a pact with the devil so that he would get power or riches. And it was said that a person who could do this was a well-versed in the Titalbe. The Titalbe is a study of books. So that is why he was called the science man. The Obia man, the science man, the Lagahu, the African shaman. What you're describing there is a progression over 200 years of arriving at a certain kind of command of magic, a certain kind of the command over nature. 